When, when I was introduced to permaculture, uh, because I was doing development work, um, the immediate response was to bring in bamboo and work with bamboo as, an, as a material. So, but we started with a blank canvas. So when I started in 2000, that was a time permaculture was not present in the Philippines. Uh, there were some people trying to do something with it, but silently there was no really movement, etc. But when we built the place, we built it in, in the plains of uh, central Luzon, so that was just plain rice, monoculture. We started planting bamboo. So after eight years, then we started building with bamboo, and then we saw uh, the different uses of bamboo, and, and it's a beautiful material. Uh, so, and I think permaculture is about beautiful edible landscaping, and, and understanding how we can never say this kind of natural environment is ugly. We will always say there is beauty in it. Wherever you go and there is nature, there is beauty. So how can we bring that beauty close to us? And we have been living, you said you're living in an urban environment. I'm living in a suburban environment. We, we can see the ugliness uh, increasing all the time. So how can we bring back beauty in the places where we live? Because living in a place means taking care of the place. I think bamboo is one way of doing that because just to see the bamboo swaying in the in, in the natural condition. Understanding when you build something with it, you, you do the same thing. And by the way, it's beautiful to eat it as well. Uh, so the making dishes with bamboo, uh, going back to the roots of the Filipino culture. I think everything relates to bamboo. And the most beautiful point for me is that before meet my, meet, uh, midwives were using it as an umbilical cord cutter, no? So they use a piece of bamboo just to slice the umbilical cord of the newborn baby. So that kind of connection and then the story of Malakas and Maganda and then saying uh, the, the, the words Malakas and Maganda, combining that into a permaculture landscaping where bamboo becomes uh, a building material uh, that will last for, um, not for generations, but that will last for generations, but every time we keep on rebuilding it. So the generation is like, uh, it's the cycles of life and death, right? but it should be with us for the next generation. Your children, my children, they should be happy with bamboo as well. They should be able to do something. The skills should be there in school. They should be there in anything we do. And if we sniff bamboo and we smell it and we see it and we feel it all the time when we move from one place to another, I think then uh, we have planted that seed uh, for, for something more beautiful to emerge in, 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 in this country break out of the box. I think everything we have learned from the past when we started universities in the 1700s when the Spaniards, Spanish came here and then they, they set up the first university in the, Philipp in the Philippines, everything is about departmentalizing the knowledge into one line and the lines are not really connecting. So how do we break that? Permaculture is like bringing back all these different uh, monoculture ways of thinking into something poly polyculture and then blending bamboo with farming and farming with uh, with uh, with uh, chemistry and physics and, and all the other stuff that we do and that makes life life. Um, so it's not just a bamboo boot camp, I think it's not just about bamboo, it's really about going beyond that and seeing what kind of bamboo fits in what kind of place for what kind of purpose and if we can break down this kind of uh, walls and we can show people that uh, uh, bamboo is just part of what we do and it should be there uh, even if it's there just as cutlery or as, 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 a, as a carpet or a box or a, a chair in your house you know the problem of selling permaculture to, 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 to a big majority is because of our monoculture way of thinking. And the bamboo guys, bamboo movement in the Philippines is too much hungo on bamboo plantation. Yes, yes. Uh, and it's all bamboo and it's again export. So it's the monetary aspect. And we haven't really gotten to planting the seed of bamboo in the hearts and the minds of people in the communities where we still think it's the poor man's timber. Exactly, that, that kind of concept. I was telling uh, this morning the story of if you build with bamboo, build for 20, 25 years, that's your sabbatical leave because every 25 years in your life something happens. After 25 years you are not single anymore, then you get married, then you need a bigger house. So you can destroy the one that you built first and you rebuild again. Mm -hmm. And after 20, another 25 years your kiddos are big, then they leave the house and it's you and your partner and you need another kind of house and when you're very old you need again another so if you look at bamboo like that it's like you stream through life and bamboo becomes part of of what we need as a human being and we, we have been uh, we have been obsessed by the we have been obsessed by the 
hardscapes. Our cities are hard, they are harsh, they are, you know, we, we want to hug each other because there is nothing else to hug anymore. I mean, there are no trees to hug, there is no, and I think, I think uh, it's a marriage made in heaven, but it's really a marriage made in, 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 on the ground here where we are now. Uh, you can't separate bamboo and timber industry from permaculture and vice versa. Because the design uh, way of thinking behind uh, building with bamboo will eventually incorporate permaculture as a very natural way of doing things. And so if we can pull all our expertise together, I think there we have an, uh, a, new, a new movement, uh, maybe aspiring to include not just those who can afford it right now, but also those who are at the bottom part and, and who need to be on the same plane as us. We can't afford to, to, to let bamboo, the bamboo move, movement go in one direction and then the other people are left behind. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a challenge I think yeah. we, we have to fake.